Hello student subscribe the fundamental pharmacy and press the bell icon for more videos. Hello students join our online course for GPAT Niper Drug Inspector to get assured amazing rank. Hello my dear students welcome back to the fundamental pharmacy. Today we are going to see classification number 23 that is a anti ulcer drugs, anti secretory drugs and drugs therapy of peptic ulcer. This classification is very very important for your GPAT. Niper, Drug Inspector and Government Pharmacist exam. So I would like to request you please watch this video until end. My dear students, we have already seen 22 classification videos. If anybody has not seen those videos, please go in the channel's playlist and watch all the previous videos. Because these videos are very very important for your GPAC, Niper, DI Pharmacist exam preparation and believe me lot of MCQs are going to be covered from these videos. My dear students, before going to the actual classification of drugs, I would like to have some, I would like to revise you some physiology, I would like to revise you some background, I would like to revise you some basics. So first of all, what do you mean by ulcer? You should know what do you mean by ulcer. So there are two terms that you will find easily. First term is nothing but the gastric ulcer and second term is nothing but the peptic ulcer. Now what do you mean by gastric ulcer? So gastric ulcer is a kind of wound or any lesions or any loss of protective layer in the inner layer of your stomach. If there is loss of inner protective layer of stomach, if there is any lesion in the stomach, if there is any wound in the stomach known as a peptic ulcer. Now same wound, same lesion or same loss of protective layer is there in your duodenum of intestine that is known as a duodenal ulcer. Now what are the reasons behind this ulcer? There are different reasons. First reason is nothing but the hyper acidity. Second reason is nothing but the bad habits like uh, alcohol drinking and smoking. Third reason is nothing but the if there is any injury to your GIT. That is third reason. Fourth reason is nothing but the hormonal imbalance. Fifth reason is nothing but the infection. So infection of some bacteria like H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori. H. pylori is the most common cause for Duodenal ulcers. This is a question. If there is an ulcer, if there is any ulcer in your stomach or duodenum, what are the different measures you have to exercise? So first measure is nothing but you have to neutralize the which acid which is already formed in your stomach by using antacids. Now second measure you can control the release of acid by using antacids. Now third measure is nothing but the you can protect that ulcer from further growth. जो अल्सर ऑलरेडी बना है उसको फर्दर ग्रोथ ना होने इसलिए आप उसको प्रोटेक्ट करते हो बाय यूजिंग अल्सर प्रोटेक्टिव नाउ फिफ्थ रीजन इज नथिंग फिफ्थ मेजर इज नथिंग बट द यू कैन इंक्रीज द हीलिंग ऑफ दैट अल्सर दैट इज अल्सर हीलिंग एजेंट सो दीस आर द मेजर नाउ व्हाई देयर इज अ हाइपर एसिडिटी टू यू नाउ टू नो दैट यू शुड नो द फिजियोलॉजी बिहाइंड गैस्ट्रिक एसिड सिक्रेशन हाउ एसिड इज फॉर्मेटेड और हाउ एसिड इज जनरेटेड इन योर स्टमक Whenever you will see any food item, जैसे आप कोई food item देखते हो, जैसे समोसा हो गया, आपका जलेबी हो गया, या फिर वड़ापा हो गया, या फिर आजकल जो नया trend है मोमोस, जैसे मोमोस हो गया, आप जैसे मोमोस को देखते हो, आपके मुंह में पानी आ जाता है, वो ऐसा जरूरी नहीं कि सिर्फ मोमोस या फिर समोसा देखके मुंह में पानी आता है, 99% लड़कों को मुंह में पानी लड़की देखने के बाद Sight that stimulus will stimulate the brain and brain will stimulate a vagus nerve. What is vagus nerve? Vagus nerve is the nerve supplied to your GIT area. It is the largest nerve which is supplied to your GIT area. Now it will stimulate it, will release the acetylcholine. Whatever food item you have seen, so that directly stimulate the gastric glands to release one hormone known as a gastrin. So, you have seen the samosa, the kachodi, the jalebi, directly gastrin ko stimulate karta hai gastrin kya hai it is a hormone of gastric gland aur wahi signal aapko acetylcholine bhi release karta hai abhi ye do jo hai ye badmash hai both gastrin aur ye acetylcholine acetylcholine kya karta hai acetylcholine teen kaam karta hai it will stimulate the acid by three different way okay first is nothing but the it will directly stimulate the proton pump it will directly stimulate the proton pump by acting on a muscarinic receptor तो मस्कनिक थ्री रिसेप्टर जो है ये प्रोटॉन पंप को स्टिमुलेट करता है व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ प्रोटॉन पंप 
so proton pump is having the role in the acid formation it is in all in the last step of your acid formation it will make hydrogen ion available so that this hydrogen ion will combine with the chloride to form a hcl right so final step jo hota hai wo iska hota hai proton pump ka uska kaam kya hai the proton pump is also known as sodium potassium atbase driven pump so sodium potassium atbase pump jo hota hai that is a proton pump it will make hydrogen ion available which can combine with the chloride ion to form a hcl right now ye acetylcholine badmash isko stimulate karke proton pump ko ye karta hai acid formation right so bm3 receptor is present on the gastric parietal cell so, ye sab kaha ho raha hai ye sab karyakram acid formation ka karyakram hota hai aapka parietal cells gastric gland ke parietal cells right now this acetylcholine also stimulate this histaminocytes or histamine containing cell present in your stomach तो ये हिस्टामिनोसाइट्स और हिस्टामाइन कंटिंग सेल जो होता है उसको एंड्रोक्रोमाफिन लाइक सेल भी होते हैं सो दिस एस्टिकोल इज स्टिमुलेट एंड्रोक्रोमाफिन लाइक सेल और हिस्टामिनोसाइट्स टू रिलीज द हिस्टामाइन एंड दिस रिलीज द हिस्टामाइन विल एक्ट ऑन हिस्टामाइन रिसेप्टर प्रेजेंट द गैस्ट्रिक पराइटल सेल सो स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ हिस्टामाइन हिस्टामिनोजिक टू रिसेप्टर विल इंक्रीज द विल स्टिमुलेट द प्रोटोन पम्प ये हिस्टामाइन टू को स्टिमुलेट करेगा हिस्टामाइन और वो स्टिमुलेट करेगा प्रोटोन पम्प को टू रिलीज द hydrogen ion which can combine with the chloride to form acid formation now this acetylcholine acts or it increases the acetylcholine increases the acid formation by three ways first it stimulate the gastrin second stimulate the histaminocytes and third it will act as agonist to the muscarinic receptor present on the proton pump right now now gastrin stimulation of gastrin so gastrin will be released and gastrin will act on its receptor known as a cck receptor chemokine receptor it will stimulate the proton pump to increase the acid formation so, uh, this uh, prostaglandins known as a prostaglandin e2 it has a negative role in the acid formation prostaglandin e2 will depress this proton pump and will decrease the acid formation prostaglandin prostaglandin e2 also has a negative impact on a gastrin secretion right you know that these are the factors which are responsible for the acid formation so aapko malum ho gaya ki एसिड कोलिन एसिड को बढ़ाता है गैस्ट्रीन एसिड को बढ़ाता है हिस्टामाइन जो है वो भी एसिड को बढ़ाता है सो दीज आर द फैक्टर विच इंक्रीज द एसिड फॉर्मेशन विच आर दिस फर्स्ट वन इज नथिंग बट एसिड कोलिन इट विल इंक्रीज द एसिड फॉर्मेशन सेकंड वन इज द गैस्ट्रीन इट विल इंक्रीज द एसिड फॉर्मेशन थर्ड वन इज द हिस्टामाइन इट विल इंक्रीज द एसिड फॉर्मेशन बिकॉज ऑल दिस थ्री स्टिमुलेट द प्रोटॉन पम्प सो टू इंक्रीज द एसिड फॉर्मेशन ओनली दिस प्रोस्टा ग्लैंड इन ई टू has a negative role in the acid formation so it has a negative role in the acid formation it will decrease the acid formation right now you know this is the physiology okay now you can easily understand what you should do to decrease the acid formation aapko acid formation kam karna hai to kya karna chahiye so what you have to do those factors which stimulate the acid formation you have to block them and those factors which decrease the acid formation you have to promote them right now we'll see the class function in the next slide once again you can see the same thing physiology of your acid formation so whenever you will see any kind of food material so what will happen your brain will signal to a vagus nerve to release the acetylcholine okay now this acetylcholine will act, will act on a it has a three phase it has it will act on a three way so first way is nothing but the it will directly stimulate the proton pump or it will directly stimulate the proton pump acting as a agonist to the muscarinic receptor second is nothing but the it will stimulate the cc uh, it will stimulate the enterocromaffin like cells or histamine containing cells histamine containing cell to release the histamine right now histamine will stimulate the histamine to receptor in the parietal cells and will increase the acid formation right this acetylcholine also stimulate the gastrin and gastrin will stimulate the this hepato hepatic एंट्रोकोमोपिन लाइक सेल्स टू रिलीज द हिस्टामाइन तो एस्टिलकोलिन एक्ट्स हुआ है थ्री वे और गैस्ट्रीन भी क्या करता है गैस्ट्रीन भी एसिड को बढ़ता है वहाँ पे और एक हारमोन होता है सोमेटोस्टेटिन सो सोमेटोस्टेटिन विल डिक्रीज द एसिड प्रोडक्शन बिकॉज सोमेटोस्टेटिन एज अ निगेटिव रोल इन द गैस्ट्रीन निगेटिव रोल ऑन द गैस्ट्रीन मतलब ये सोमेटोस्टेटिन गैस्ट्रीन को डिक्रीज करता है सो गैस्ट्रीन अगर डिक्रीज हो गया तो आपका एसिड भी कम हो जाएगा सो सोमेटोस्टेटिन एज अ निगेटिव रोल इन द एसिड फॉर्मेशन your prostaglandin is also has a negative role in this now that's how acid is generated even this a jo gastrin hota hai gastrin is also stimulated gastrin is also stimulated by peptides present in your diet agar aap non veg kar rahe ho to usme protein rahega 
that will stimulate the gastrin to increase the acidity. Now we will see the classification. What will be the different classification? When I said that the factors acid ko padate hai, unko block karo, jo factors acid ko kam karte hai, unko promote karo. Factor ko badane wale factor ko se, badane wala hai histamine, badane wala hai proton pump, badane wala hai acetylcholine, to tino ko bhi block karo. Kam karne wale ko nahi, acid ko kam karne wale, kam karne wala hai prostaglandin, kam karne wala hai somatostatin, to unke analogs use karo. So, ye paach class to apke yehi bhe hoi. So, there is no need to remember the class first. But still, we will see the classification. So, drugs used in the peptic ulcer. Classification of drugs used in the peptic, peptic ulcer. Drugs used in the peptic ulcer. So, first class will be your antacids. The first class will be your antacids. So, which will react chemically which, with already formed acids. Which will react chemically. So, antacids will react chemically with already formed acid and will neutralize that. Okay. In that, you have two classes. First one is a systemic one, systemic antacids. Now, when this is systemic, why it is called as systemic? Because these examples, sodium bicarbonate and sodium citrate, so these are absorbed into systemic circulation. That's why they are known as systemic antacids. Now, you can see sodium bicarbonate. So, it is a basic compound. If it blood, mein jayega to, blood ka pH ka 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 ka. So, it has a adverse effect known as a systemic alkalosis or urinary alkalosis. Is the adverse bit. Again, sodium bicarbonate means sodium plus carbon. So it will increase the sodium ion in your body. So if any hypertensive patient takes systemic antacids, what will happen? So its blood pressure will be increased. So blood pressure will be increased and he may die. And it will increase the sodium ion in the body. So it has another adverse effect known as a rebound of acidity. A rebound acidity karta hai. Matlab, immediately aapka acid neutralize karta hai. This is what the sodium bicarbonate is present in the inu. You might have seen the inu. आपने इनो लिया होगा इनो जो होता है इनो बुलबुले उसमें दैट इज सिस्टमिक एंटासिड इसमें सोडियम बाइकार्बोनेट हुआ है दैट विल डिक्रीज योर एसिडिटी इन अ 6 सेकंड ओके बट रेगुलर यूज ऑफ दिस सोडियम बाइकार्बोनेट और सिस्टमिक एंटासिड विल कॉज रिबाउंड ऑपेसिटी मतलब ये कुछ टाइम के लिए आपका एसिड बना न्यूट्रलाइज कर देगा लेकिन ये ज्यादा एसिड बनाता है सो इट बी इट दैट इज नोन एज रिबाउंड ऑपेसिटी राइट सो सिस्टमिक एंटासिड विल कॉज सिस्टमिक अल्कोलोसिस रिबाउंड ऑफ एसिडिटी and flatulus we sodium bicarbonate jo neutralize karega acid ko usme kya hai carbon dioxide generate hota hai co carbon dioxide so increase the carbon dioxide in your git will increase the discomfort and flatulus so discomfort flatulence here uska adverse effect so again non systemic antacid in that you have these drugs non systemic antacids so why they are known as non systemic because they are not absorbed in the systemic circulation magnesium hydroxide magnesium trisilicate Sodium hydroxide, megaldrate, and calcium carbonate. Right? These are known as non-systemic antacids. Ye kya karenge? They will react with the acid, neutralize the acid, and whatever the reaction product is there, so that will be removed from your pieces. Now, magnesium hydroxide. It is known as the milk of magnesium. Magnesium trisilicate. This may be magnesium. Hai. Those non-systemic antacids which has a magnesium in their formula. So these two. So they will cause. They will cause diarrhea. So, diarrhea is the adverse effect of this magnesium hydroxide and magnesium trisilicate. Now, this aluminum hydroxide will cause constipation. Okay, ye constipation karega, ye diarrhea karega. Okay, ye karega diarrhea. Magnesium ion will cause diarrhea, aluminum ion will cause constipation. That's why they are combined together to prevent the or to counteract the adverse effect of each other. Now, calcium carbonate, it is again non systemic antacid. So, it will cause one adverse effect known as a milk alkali like syndrome what is that we will see in upcoming slide so this is the first class of your antacids ye aapka first class kaun sa ho gaya so this was our first class known as antacids antacid is the first class now second class now what will they do they will they will neutralize the acid which is already formed ye already formed acid ko neutralize kar denge theek now second class is nothing but the known as anti secretory agents is second class of gastric acid secretion inhibitors they are known as anti secretory agents ye kya karenge they will prevent the formation of acid they will not neutralize the acid but they will prevent the formation of acid so they will not let the acid to be formed so in that you have different subclasses first anti histaminic or h2 receptor blockers in that you have all the deans histamine 2 receptor blockers jo usme deans hota hai cementidine ranitidine cementidine 
pantidine, pamotidine, nizatidine, roxetidine, and both are adenes. So all that are the deans, histamine to receptor agonists. So out of that, cementidine is no more used. And why it is not used? Because it has a anti-androgenic effect. It has an anti-androgenic effect. Ye males may importance for that. So the, it will cause importance in the male. It will cause <coughs> gynecomastia in the males. It will cause galactorrhea in the females. Okay. Again, this cementidine easily crosses the blood vein barrier and affect the it could cause sedation and another psycho psychomotor effects, right? All these drugs they will have imidazole structure in their imidazole in their structure. All these are the imidazole derivatives. Imidazole derivatives. All these are the imidazole derivatives except rantidine. So this rantidine has a furan ring in the structure. It will not have imidazole. Pakis may imidazole ring. Oh, everybody has imidazole. Rantidine will not have imidazole. Again, in this HTV receptor blockers, most potent drug consign. So, most potent drug is Pamotidine. So, Pamotidine is the most potent amongst the all H2 receptor blockers. Now, all these drugs are used in the all these drugs are used in the different conditions like acidity, gastro efflux, reflective diseases, duodenal ulcer, gastric ulcer, or NSAID induced ulcer. Now, second class in that you have proton pump inhibitors proton pump inhibitors so they will irreversibly bind with the proton pump and inhibit the proton pump okay so they are known as a hit and run drug hit and run drug right in that you have all the hazards omeprazole prevprazole isomeprazole pantoprazole lansoprazole lanoprazole rapiprazole and dexrapiprazole okay all the hazards they are the azole derivative right proton pump inhibitor they irreversibly bind with the proton pump and inhibit the proton pump. They are known as a hit and run drug, right? In that, dexrapiprazole is a isomer of rapiprazole. Isomprazole is a isomer of omeprazole. Isomprazole is a isomer of omeprazole. All these drugs are a pro drugs. Okay, pro drugs. And sulfana, sulfanamide is a active metabolite. And they they are given on an empty stomach. Okay. Most potent amongst the proton pump inhibitor most potent one of the lanoprazole l a n o lanoprazole lanoprazole is the most potent drug amongst the proton pump inhibitors they are a drug of choice proton pumps are drug of choice in the GERD gastrointestinal reflux disease they are a drug of choice in the NACID induced ulcer they are a drug of choice in the zollinger ellison syndrome now next one is the anticholinergics so next anticholinergics so this drug will block the acetylcholine and will prevent the excessive acid formation so pyranzepine propanthelin oxyponium atropine and all that okay but anticholinergics will have adverse effects so all these drugs can cause all these drugs can cause urinary <laughs> retention okay? dryness of mouth dryness of mouth urinary retention constipation etc etc okay next one is nothing but the prostaglandin analog so in that you have misoprostal lanzanoprost carbapost benzaprost so all these are the prostaglandin analog so they are structural analog of prostaglandin right now ye do class okay now third class of your anti ulcer drugs so third class kya hoga ye ye kya karenge ye jo acid already bana hai usko neutralize karenge ये क्या करेंगे जो एसिड बनने नहीं देंगे फर्स्ट दे विल प्रिवेंट द एसिड सेकंड दे विल फर्स्ट दे विल न्यूट्रलाइज द एसिड सेकंड दे विल प्रिवेंट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एसिड नाउ थर्ड थर्ड इज नथिंग बट द अल्सर प्रोटेक्टिव कोई जो अल्सर ऑलरेडी है उसको प्रोटेक्ट करने वाला सो दे आर नोन अल्सर प्रोटेक्टिव इन दैट यू आर सुक्रोल फैट इट इज नथिंग बट द सुक्रोल फैट इज नथिंग बट द एल्युमिनियम सॉल्ट ऑफ सुक्रोज एल्युमिनियम सॉल्ट ऑफ सुक्रोज दैट इज सुक्रोल फैट एंड इट इज अ product it is metabolized and it is become it will become active right in the acidic pH now second is the colloidal bismuth salts this colloidal bismuth salts also has a <coughs> activity against yes pyrin so they will prevent the further growth of ulcer now last class of that anti h pyrin drug in the last class you have anti h pyrin drugs as i told you the reasons for ulcers so one of the reason is a h pyrin infection H pyrin means what? H means helicobacter. 
पैरली मतलब पैरली आप बोलेंगे सर बैक्टीरिया जो है वो स्टम में स्टमक में जिंदा कैसे रहता है हाउ दिस बैक्टीरिया विल सर्वाइव इन द स्टमक तो आप जितना पेट भर भर के पूरा बिरयानी खाते हो छोटी हड्डी बड़ी हड्डी उनको जो भी पसंद है वो खाते हो ठीक है फाइबर्स हो रहे सो इफ योर स्टमक इज एबल टू डाइजेस्ट ऑल दिस प्रोटीन एंड ऑल दैट सो हाउ दिस हाउ दिस बैक्टीरिया इज एबल टू सर्वाइव इन योर स्टमक सो दिस बैक्टीरिया एज ए वन एंजाइम नोन एज अ यूरियस यूरियस नाम का एंजाइम होता है इसमें एंड यू वॉट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ दैट यूरियस दैट यूरियस विल ब्रेक डाउन द यूरिया एंड कन्वर्ट इन टू अमोनिया एंड अमोनिया इज अ बेसिक एंड इट विल न्यूट्रलाइज द एसिड एंड दैट्स वाई यश पॉयलरी विल सर्वाइव इन द स्टमक अदरवाइज सब कुछ मर जाता है स्टमक बट यश पॉयलरी जिंदा रह जाता है क्यों उसके पास क्या है उसके पास शील्ड है वट इज द नेम ऑफ शील्ड दैट इज नथिंग बट द यूरियस ओके नाउ इफ अल्सर इज बिकॉज ऑफ द यश पॉयल इन्फेक्शन then these drug obviously they are also used which are they will neutralize the already formed acid these kind of drugs they will prevent the further acid formation but underlying cause jo h pyloride that will not be renewed so to relieve that or to kill that h pyloride infection you need antibiotics and what is the what are the antibiotics so amoxicillin is there clarithromycin is there metronidazole is there it is a anti protozoal drug metronidazole uska adverse effect hota hai bitter taste in the mouth or metallic taste in the mouth tinnitus as well then tetracyclines and colloidal bismuth salts so these are the drugs used in the anti h pyloridy treatment so out of that now you have to remember this clarithromycin is a antibiotic of choice in a h pyloridy infection right colloidal bismuth salts they are also as a anti h pyloridy activity we'll see in the next slides about the triple therapy and quadruple therapy of ulcers now in the next we will see treatment of choice for h pyloridy therapy first areas with low clarithromycin resistance so in that 24 days daily twice a day for 24 hours uh, twice a day for 14 days clarithromycin amoxicillin and azole azole means any drug from omeprazole or any ppi so clarithromycin amoxicillin and ppi cap 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 is known as a triple therapy for h pyloridy infection so cap cap means triple therapy for h pyloridy infection so this is a triple therapy twice a day for 14 days clarithromycin 500 mg amoxicillin 100 mg and lansoprazole 30 mg that is known as a cap that is known as a triple therapy now what do you mean by quadruple therapy what do you mean by quadruple therapy for h pyloridy so in the areas where there is a resistance to clarithromycin so you have to use these four drugs so lansoprazole bismuth subcitrate tetracycline and metronidazole so in the clarithromycin resistance if there is a clarithromycin resistance so replace clarithromycin with the tetracycline again for 14 days this is known as quadruple therapy ye kya hai quadruple therapy it is known as quadruple therapy now we'll see the next some few important points from this uh, anti ulcer drugs if there is imbalance between defense factor and provocative factors if there is imbalance between defense factor and provocative factors so you will suffer from ulcer so what are the defense factor defense factor matlab ye ulcer acidity kam karegi so what are the so mucus is there defense factor sodium bicarbonate is there or bicarbonate ion is there mucosal blood flow so they are known as a protective factor now what do you mean by provocative or aggressive factor so they are nothing but the pepsin then h pyloridy infection and nsaids means drugs so ye pepsin nsaids and h pyloridy will increase the acid the mucus bicarbonate and mucosal blood flow ye decrease karenge theek hai now second point is that cimetricone is a drug Used in the treatment of ulcer, cimetricone is an anti-foaming agent. It is used in the platelets and also used to prevent the bed sores. Now we we'll see the next antacids containing calcium. So those antacids which has a calcium in their structure or which has a calcium ion, their adverse effect is there. Milk alkali-like syndrome is the adverse effect. Calcium containing and or systemic antacids, milk alkali-like syndrome. So hypercalcium ion is there. renal insufficiency is there and metabolic alkalosis is there 
Now it is caused by <coughs> it is caused by sodium bicarbonate and calcium carbonate or milk containing or calcium containing food. Now pemetidin is the most potent histamine two receptor blocker and cementidin is the least potent histamine two receptor blocker. You have to remember. Okay? Now proton pump inhibitors are drug of choice in the NSAID. <coughs> proton pump inhibitors are the DOC drug of choice in the NSAID induced ulcer or peptic ulcer gastro esophageal reflux disease then zollinger ellison syndrome all these ppis proton pump inhibitors they are a pro drugs and they are their active metabolite is nothing but sulfenamide okay you have to remember they are given on an empty stomach lansoprazole is the most okay lanoprazole not a lansoprazole <coughs> lanoprazole is the most potent ppi proton pump inhibitor so what is sulfate? Sulfate is ulcer put into and it is a aluminium salt of sucrose. It gets polymerized in an acidic pH less than 4 and it has act as a physical barrier for ulcer. So ulcer put into. These are the two new drugs that is a rebamipide and ecabate. Rebamipide and ecabate. Reba, rebamipide and ecabate. These are the these are the pro drugs. These are the pro drugs and increases the prostaglandin scavenging increases the prostaglandin secretion and which can scavenge the oxygen radical oxygen radical jo the free radicals they also damages the GIT carbonyl oxone it is a drug obtained from licorice and which increases the epithelization of ulcer carboxo carbonyl carbonyl oxone ye drug hai licorice se aaya hai wahan se usko isolate kiya it increases the epithelization of your ulcer. Ulcer ko jada epithelial layer kara dega. Now H. pylori for the diagnostic or for the identification of H. pylori. Test is there known as a urea breath test. Question is equal to Is a diagnostic test. Now cap that is a cap means kya? Cap means clarithromycin. A means amoxicillin. And P means proton pump inhibitor. So cap is nothing but a triple therapy for H. pylori infection. You can order this magic bullet for GPAD, NAPR, DI, pharmacist, read 2-3 times for exam and qualify 100%. You can order this from me. We have very much promising result from past few years. Thousands of students they are placed in the NAPR. You can also join our GPAD NAPR 2024-25 online crash course where you will have live lectures, recorded lectures. All subject wise and chapter wise lectures will be there. Study material in the form of hard copy will be given by courier to add to your address. Test series will also be there. Everything is there in 8000 and that is valid for 2 years. If you Hello, students, order the magic bullet for GPAT Niper Drug Inspector, read twice and qualify 100%.